G'day and welcome back. Another look at old radio gear. I didn't bother waiting for the comments on my last video. I thought, hey, I found this while I was going through another box here and I thought I'd show you a little bit of the old gear again. Now this is a Futaba digital system. It's, well say digital, it's analog. It's, um, you know, oh man, the sticks are jammed, it's so old. Um, yeah, it's a five channel. There's the fifth channel, just a little thing which also doesn't turn. This again, I think battery's corroded in this and it's just gone to hell in a handbasket. But there you go, this is what you got for your money. There was a switch up there, I think, and you had the antenna here. So I've probably used this to repair other systems through the years. So uh, that's why there's little bits missing, but there you go. Um, these were the sticks I was talking about in my last video. See, they have a little ball in the middle here, and that's the pivot point. So there's always going to be a little bit of slop with this type of stick unit. And this is pretty much the same era as when I built my own gear. So you can see the difference. Um, I used much better stick units. And if we turn it over, have a look at the goodness inside. Woohoo, look at the size of this circuit board here. A big, this is so big because, oh yeah, that battery's buggered. Um, this is big because, as I said, now hang on a minute, I have to get this. These weren't designed to be pulled apart very easily. One of the, uh, what is that caught in there? Hang on a minute, while well, I, this is what you call preparation knot. There's a wire caught in the stick unit. Oh, there we go, this'll do. Okay, so this is, look at this logic board compared to the one I had. Look how much bigger it is. It's got the radio frequency part as well. So here is the RF section up here. Let me pull in a bit tighter so you can have a look. Hopefully this is focused. Um, here's the RF section here. So your crystal oscillator is over here, a little oscillator, a little amplifier stage, then there's your output stage, and there's your uh, double tuned output filter here. And this goes off to your antenna. Um, and all the rest of this is logic. As I said, this is five channels. So what we've got here is a, uh, looks like the oscillator at this end. There's the oscillator to generate the, the oh, better get this into shot. Here's the little oscillator that generates the square waves and you've got one, two, three, four, five, a transistor for each channel, capacitor for each channel, and little trimmers here. So this is the trimmer for the master oscillator. Then you've got trimmer for channel one, two, three, four, five. These all um, combined to give you the logic. Now, the, I haven't got the other transmitter here in, at the moment actually, but as you can see, I did this with integrated circuits in the transmitter I designed myself, which made it smaller, which made it more reliable, which made it actually better performance. So I was a generation ahead at the time these radios were made. And uh, yeah, so that's what you got for your money back in the old days. What's, this must be 27 megahertz. Oh, oh, even the little label on the crystals coming apart. This is 27 o. Four, five. So yeah, this is 27 megahertz. These are way back in the day. And this didn't corrode, fortunately, because even though the battery's gone, the battery in this one's in a plastic box, which has limited the amount of corrosion that's taken place. One thing that's really interesting in these old radios is, let's look over here. Here we've got a transformer. Because you plug these into the mains. You plug the whole transmitter into the mains there. And transformer took the voltage down to a lower level. And then there was a little light bulb. Quite often, yeah, down here. In here, we can see if we look very, very closely. This is high tech stuff. Um, to charge a NICAD, you want a constant current. So, what they did was they ran the power through a little light bulb. And the idea being there, that is actually what we call a um, positive temperature coefficient resistor. As the light bulb, as more current flows through the light bulb, it gets hotter and its resistance goes up, so it limits the current. So, if you run your current through a light bulb, it tends to be self limiting in terms of current. And then this goes off and it charges the battery. So <laughs> no need for a separate four button charger. But these are NICADs, typically 500 milliamps. And they would last you just over an hour if you're lucky. Because these radios put out about three quarters of a watt. Or they had about three quarters of a watt going into them. And uh, hey, look, look at this. Look, look, look. Even Futaba had bodges on their production radios. Look at that. So I don't feel so bad now. Bodged a component across there. But uh, yeah, I mean, this was, there's no date code on here, I don't think. And because there's no integrated circuits, we can't see a date code on any of the components, which is unfortunate because I'd have liked to have just checked and seen exactly when this radio was made. But here's another this meters form of this, these little meters. This one showed you the, I think it showed you the radio frequency output. It wasn't a battery meter, it was radio frequency output because it was more important to know how much power your transmitter was putting out than what the batteries are like. Because if the batteries go down, the power goes down anyway. But if you have a fault with your aerial or something, then that meter will give you the inside clue. So yeah, there you go. I mean, hey, more stuff from the past, very crusty stuff from the past, out of my bin of stuff I should have thrown out ages ago, but didn't. And uh, oh, it says on the top here, 27045 megahertz. Hmm. Um, there you go. Um, I'm sure I've got more stuff. I'll keep looking. Who knows what you'll see on this channel next? I'm going to wash my hands now. Ugh. There you go. Questions, comments, usual place. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.